This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is for the course ME273 Statics, and we use the book Statics by R.C. Hibbler. Today I'm going to cover Chapter 9.2, Composite Bodies. After today, you will be able to determine the location of the center of gravity and the center of mass, and you'll be able to use the method of composite bodies to find the location of the centroid of a body made up of simple shapes. Uh, first we'll look at some applications, we'll go over the method of composite bodies, and then do some problem solving. So this I-beam as you see here, and this T-beam as you see here, they're commonly used in building various types of structures. And when we do a stress or deflection analysis of this beam, uh, which we, you will do in solid mechanics if you take that course, um, we'll need to find the location of the centroid of this composite shape. So how can we easily do that? Well, we'll use the method of composite bodies. And here we see a compressor. It's assembled with many individual components. Uh, and if you're given the weights or the masses of all those components and the location of the center of gravity of all those components, uh, how can we find the center of uh, mass or center of gravity of this entire compressor. We need to know that to design the ground support reactions right at A and B. Um, and if we know the weight and the center of gravity of the individual components, we need a simple way to determine the location of the center of gravity of the assembled unit. So first let's com consider a composite body which consists of a series of bodies as shown in this figure. So now we've got uh, n number of bodies and each one has a weight and a particular location in space. And we want to find out what is the center of gravity due to all of those weights. Well, the net weight, of course, is just you know the summation of all the weights, right? And again, we'll sum moments about the y-axis in order to get the equations that we need uh, to find the center of gravity. And this is very similar to what we did in chapter 9.1. So first, let's sum moments about the y-axis. So um, that means that the, you know, the weight is going to be applied here, this resultant weight. So the resultant weight times the distance from the x-axis, which is x-bar, that's what we're looking for, must be equal to, you know, x tilde 1 times weight 1. And x tilde 1 is the distance to the uh, this particle right here. It's the distance from the y-axis. You know, plus x tilde 2 times the weight 2, you know, plus dot, 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 uh, x tilde sub n weight sub n. And likewise, we can do the same thing uh, about the x and z axes to find the, the coordinates uh, y bar and z bar. And when we simplify this equation here, what we get is that uh, x bar is equal to the summation of all the x tildes times the weight divided by the summation of the weights, which is the resultant weight. And likewise, y bar is equal to the summation of all the y tildes times the weight divided by the summation of all the weights which is you know the resultant weight and z bar is equal to the sum of z tildes times all the weights uh, and this would be weights at the end right divided by the total weight and you can replace the W with an M in these equations, and that way we can find the coordinates of the center of mass. And like I said earlier in the previous lecture, those are the same. The center weight and the center, uh, center of gravity and the center of mass are the same as long as the body um, is in a constant gravitational field and is of uh, constant density. So let's talk about a composite body. Many industrial objects can be considered as composite bodies made up of a series of connected, simple shaped parts. For instance, a rectangle, a triangle, a semicircle, or a hole. Uh, for instance, here you have this part. Uh, it consists of this triangle, simple shape, consists of this rectangle or this square, 
in the rectangle, I guess, uh, plus this half circle. And then this, this circle represents a hole. Now, when we use holes, um, we just negate the area on the hole when we do the composite body uh, formulation. And likewise here, we see a shape, a composite body that consists of, you know, a rectangle, a couple of triangles, and another two rectangles here. So knowing the location of the centroid or center of gravity of the simple shape parts, we can easily determine the location of the center of gravity for this, these more complex composite bodies. So the steps for analysis, divide the body into pieces that are known shapes. And by known shapes, I mean simple shapes that you can go to the inside cover, uh, back cover of the book, and find the location of the centroids of these simple shapes. And again, the simple shapes are squares, triangles, rectangles, circles, half circles, what have you. Now remember, as I said earlier, holes are considered as pieces with negative weight or size. The next step is to make a table. The first column is the segment number, and we just number them sequentially, maybe A, B, C, D. Uh, the second column is the weight, mass, or size. It depends upon the problem. Uh, the next set of columns are for the moment arms. Uh, and finally, we have some more columns that record uh, results of simple intermediate calculations. And this will, table will become clear when I use, do the examples. Uh, fix the coordinate axes, determine the coordinates of the center of gravity of the centroid of each of the pieces, and then fill in the table. And then we'll sum the columns to get uh, x bar, y bar, and z bar. Uh, we'll be using formulas just like this. So let's do some examples to make this crystal clear. Now we have these three blocks, they're assembled as shown. We want to find the center of volume of this assembly. So um, in this piece, we have three blocks, A, B, and C. A and C are triangles, and B is a rectangle. So first thing to do is get the volumes. Here's the table I was talking about. First column is a segment number. The next column is, you know, it's the volume, the mass, the weight, the length. It depends upon the problem. Uh, because you can also find the centroid of a piece of wire that's bent into a shape, you know, or, or of a simple area, or a volume, or a mass, or, or weight. Uh, the next step is to write the, uh, we're going to fix the coordinate axes, as you see here, and then we need to write x tilde, y tilde, and z tilde, and that's the distance between the origin and the centroid of each of the simple shapes. Uh, the next three columns are the moment arms, so it's just x tilde times v, y tilde times v, and z tilde times v. So first we need the volumes. So the volume of A, A it's, so it's one half the base times the height. The base is 1.5, right? The height is 1.8, so one half, 1 1.5 times 1.8 times the thickness, which is 0.5. So the volume of segment A is 0.675 cubic meters. And the volume of B, it is um, the length of the base of B, which you know starts here, so it's 0.5 plus 2, so it's 2.5, times the height, which is 1.8, times the thickness, which again is 0.5. So the volume of B is 2.25 cubic meters. And finally, the volume of C of one half the base, which is 1.5, times the height, which is 1.8, times the thickness, 0.5. So its uh, volume is the same as that of A, 0.675 cubic meters. So we just, you know, plug those three numbers into here, and we add them together to get 3.6. The next step is to find the location of the centroid at each of the simple shapes in our coordinate system. So the first one for A. Um, A is going to be in the x direction. I have to go out 0.5 meters to get to that point, and then I need to go one third of the base over, right? If you go to the back of the book, you can see that the centroid of a triangle is one third of the base, so that would be one third of 1.5 or 0.5. So x tilde in this case is one meter, 0.5 plus 0.5. 
um, Y tilde. Uh, segment A would be um, just half the thickness, right? Or 0.25. And Z tilde, that is uh, going to be one third the height, which is uh, 1.8, so it's 0.6. Now these numbers here, 0 0.675 is 1 times 0 0.675. Then we take 0 0.25 times 0 0.675 and get that. And then 0 0.6 times 0 0.675 and get that. So let's look at object B. Uh, X tilde for object B is uh, just going to be half its width, the 0 0.25. Half its thickness, rather. Y tilde for the block. That is going to be just half the base, which is 2.5 meters, so half of that's 1.25. And Z tilde is half the height, or 0.9. Now for C, X tilde for C is going to be half the thickness, or 0.25. Now Y tilde is we need to get from the origin to here, and that is, looks like it's 2.5, right? We have 0.5 plus 2. Then we need to go over additional 1.5 over 3. So that comes out to be 3 meters. And Z tilde for block C is just one third of the height of C, which is uh, 0.6. And again, we do those multiplications as we did in the first row. And then we sum these columns here. And here's a summary of that table. And to find the center of volume, we just use our center of volume equations. So it's a summation of all the x tildes times the volumes, which is 1.406, divided by the total volume, 3.6. So it's 0.391 meters. And likewise for y and z, we do the same thing. And we get y bar is 1.39, and z bar is 0.788 meters. So let's do a problem with the hole in it. Um, we're given this two plane, this two-dimensional planar part, and we want to find the centroid. So we're going to divide the body into four pieces: this triangle A, a rectangle B, a quarter circle C. And by that quarter circle, I mean the entire quarter circle, and the semicircular area D. And since that's the whole, we're going to treat its weight as negative, or its area rather as negative. So let's create our table. First we have triangle A. Its area is one half the base times the height, so it's one half times three times three, or 4.5 uh, square inches. The location of the center, the centroid of A, and the hair coordinate system origin is here, so we have to go over three, and then the centroid of this is one third of its base, so again that's one inch, so it's three plus one. And it's negative, right? It's in the negative direction, so it's minus 4. Uh, y tilde for, se for segment A, it's 3 inches high, so Y tilde is one third of that, or 1 inch. Uh, rectangle B uh, has an area of 3 by 3, so it's 9. Uh, X tilde for B is half the base, so it's minus 1.5. And Y tilde is half the height, which is 1.5. So for the quarter circle C, uh, its area is, uh, well, the area of an entire circle is pi r squared. We only have a fourth of that, so it's pi r squared over 4. r is 3 inches, so this would be 3 squared or 9 pi over 4. So 9 pi over 4. Uh, x tilde for the hole. And you can go to the uh, inside cover at the back of the book, but it's uh, 4 thirds times r pi. So 4 times the uh, radius, which is 3, divided by 3 pi. And y tilde, likewise, is similar to that. It's 4 thirds times r pi. It's actually the same thing. Now the semicircle, um, x tilde of the semicircle uh, is 0, right? The centroid in the x direction of this, this uh, half circle here is 0. And its y tilde for the whole is, uh, again, it's 4r over 3 pi. In this case, r is 1 inch, so it's 4 times 1 over 3 pi. And note here that I took the area of the semicircle. Uh, the area of a circle is pi r squared. We only have half a circle, so it's 2. 
uh, r is 1 inch, so the area of that circle is pi over 2. And since it's a hole, we treat it as negative. And then we just multiply x bar, x tilde rather, times the area, get minus 18. Y tilde times the area and get 4.5. Do the same thing for uh, sections B, C, and D and sum them all up. And then sum all the areas as well. So here is the table summarized. And we just use our equation for composite bodies. Um, so it's x tilde a divided by the area. So it's this. And that comes out to be minus uh, 1.18 inch. And y bar is the summation of y tilde a over the summation of a. So it's 26.33 divided by 19, or 1.39 inches. So the centroid is located here. And it's a good idea to look at those numbers and make sure they make sense. Uh, it does make sense that the centroid is located in the second quadrant, kind of, right? And so that means that x, tilde, x bar is negative and y bar is positive. This concludes chapter 9.2 in composite bodies, and this also concludes the video lectures in ME273 statics. See you in cyberspace.